Today, we're going to install Prisma with Next.js using Postgres as the backing database. We're going to do this in the app directory, but also show how you can use Prisma in the old pages directory as well. Prisma is a fantastic ORM that lets you define your schema, run migrations, and manage your database. It's built on top of TypeScript, so everything you do with Prisma is type safe. This makes development super easy. It's pretty easy to get started with, but there are a couple of small gotchas that might trip you up. We're going to go through this end to end and make sure you have it running correctly. Let's get started. We're going to do this entirely from scratch. So we're going to create a brand new Next.js app. Of course, you can use your own if you already have one. We'll call it Prisma Postgres. And we'll use the app directory so we can do this both ways. All right, make sure you CD in. The first thing that you're going to need is a Postgres database to connect to to test this. You can use Supabase, you can use a Postgres instance running locally. I like to use Docker, it's great for ephemeral Postgres databases. I do this a lot. So here's a command to run Postgres on port 5432. This is gonna create the default Postgres user and the default Postgres database. Make sure you know how to connect to your database. We'll need that soon. Back in the project directory, we're going to install two packages. We're going to install Prisma and the client. The Prisma package, you only need in dev mode or maybe in your CI CD pipeline. It's the thing that's going to help manage your database. It creates the migrations, it executes them, it can pull from the database and it can push to the database. You don't need this package in production. So make sure you only install it into your dev dependencies. The client is what you'll use to connect to your database in your application and actually execute all the SQL queries. So that you're going to need. P npm and only for dev. And then we'll install the client as well. The next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to initialize Prisma. Luckily, there's an easy command for this. npx Prisma init. This will create a folder called Prisma and set up all the defaults for you. There we go. With that, let's jump in. Here's the Prisma folder with a default schema. We're using Postgres, which is the default, so we don't need to do anything there. And it's reading the environment variable database URL. It's put that into our environment file, which is nice, but this connection string is obviously not correct. For us, we're using the Postgres user and there is no password. 5432 is correct. And the database is just Postgres. All right. Now we can create a very basic Prisma schema. For this, we're just gonna create a basic user model and fill in some fields. We'll give it an ID, a required email, a required password, and an optional name. Now that we've modified our schema, we have to tell Prisma that we've made a change to it. Prisma executes changes on the database as a migration. You can have migrations roll forwards and apply to the database, and you can also create a way to roll backwards in case something goes wrong. This is useful when you're making changes to production and you want to ensure you have a way to reverse the change that you made in case there's a bug or something in your application that's causing problems. So to create our very first Prisma migration, we're gonna run npx Prisma migrate dev, and we'll name it something simple like init because it's our very first one. All right, it creates a very unique migration here, and then it applies it to our database. So it's connecting with that connection string that we just used. And then it goes ahead and generates the Prisma client 
and make sure that all the type definitions there are fully up to date. The first gotcha is that the Prisma client stores the type definitions in the node modules folder. Now you don't commit the node modules folder to a Git repo. So when you go to build your application and when you're deploying it to Vercel or deploying it somewhere else, anywhere in your CI CD pipeline, one of the first things you do is reinstall all the node modules. See where I'm going with this? When you reinstall the node modules, you don't have the Prisma type definitions. You have to regenerate those. So you can either post installation generate them or as part of the build process, you can regenerate them. I like to add it as part of the build process. So open up your prisma.package and go ahead and jump right here into build and do prisma generate and then do the next build. This means that on platforms like Vercel, the first thing that's going to happen when it goes to build it is first you're going to generate all the TypeScript definitions for your schema, then you'll complete the build. This will ensure there are no type errors. All right, we have our schema and it's been applied. Let's go ahead and take a look and see exactly what that looks like. I have a nice little program for browsing Postgres databases. And here you can see we're on localhost, the Postgres database, and here's our user table. We can go ahead and jump in and take a quick look at the structure, it has an ID, email, password, name, everything exactly as we defined. Of course, for content, there are no users yet. We have nothing. Luckily, Prisma gives us a nice way to seed the database. To get this working with TypeScript in Next.js specifically, we have to do a couple things first. The first thing we have to do is we have to install tsnode. This lets us execute a node script, but the script is written in TypeScript. The Prisma documentation says that there's a key in the package.json file, which Prisma will read to seed the database after commands. If we go ahead and take a look, we're going to go ahead and add a new Prisma key and in it, we'll call this seed. And this is where you're going to execute the TS node into a new seed script. However, the Next.js default settings for modules are not compatible with just executing a simple script. So when we go and add the command to execute our seed script that Prisma is going to use, we have to set the compiler options accordingly. Here, we're saying execute TS node, what we just installed, and we're setting the compile options to make sure the module is being used as common JS. And then there's going to be a Prisma seed file that it executes. We don't have that yet, so let's go ahead and create that now. This can be named anything, but this is a common name for it. And in this file, Prisma is going to execute it after it runs migrations or updates or resets the database. This will allow us to have an easy way to see default information. When you're building an application, development speed is everything. So it's really useful to be able to just see the default data once, and then whenever you're rapidly iterating, you don't need to worry about the data being there or not. For this, we're just gonna upsert a user. So here we have Prisma user upsert, and we're going to check the email. We have to add at unique here, and then regenerate the Prisma client. Here, we're simply upserting a user into our database. We're checking to see if this user exists because otherwise every time you ran a migration, it would just create a new one if you used create instead of upsert. So we're checking to make sure the user does not exist. And if it does, then we're simply going to do nothing because we don't need to update it. And if it doesn't, then we're going to create this test user. This very secure password is password. Lastly, we're simply going to log the output. 
there's a couple of places where this will run. It will run after a migration. It'll run after you reset the database, or you can just run a command to seed the database. The command is prisma db seed. You'll see that it picked up the command that we wrote into the package.json. If you don't have these compiler options, this won't work in Next.js. And then it outputs exactly what it did, and the seed command has been executed. If we jump back into our database and refresh, we now have a user. So let's go ahead and use it. You can see in our application, this is the main way you're going to be using the Prisma client. However, if you keep creating a Prisma client, you're going to keep creating connections into your database. The Prisma client has pooling built in. So you really just want to have one instance of a client in your application at any one time. This pattern is commonly known as a singleton. Most of the time, singletons are anti-patterns. You don't need them that frequently. But this is a good example of when a singleton is actually correct to use. You want to have a single object that is managing the connection to your database and it manages everything internally. To go ahead and make that easy, we're going to create a new folder called lib and then inside create a prisma.ts file. This is going to create that global instance of our connection. This came straight from the docs, so don't think of it as anything too special. We're importing the Prisma client, and then we're going to check the global object um, to see if it has Prisma already. If it does, we're going to use that global Prisma object. And if it doesn't, we're gonna create one. Because we're exporting this, this is only going to be executed once during the export process where we'll create a new one. And then after that, we'll simply reuse that same Prisma client. Go ahead and save this. And now when you're importing Prisma to use it, don't import the Prisma client and create a new one. Instead, import the Prisma instance from this file. All right, let's go ahead and use it. In our app folder, for the first time here, we can go ahead and start running our dev server. Let's go ahead and take a look and make sure everything is exactly as we imagine. This should show our default sort of welcome to Next.js application. All right, there we are. It's working perfectly. To see this in use, we're going to do this in two places. We're gonna use the client in the app directory in a React server component and we'll also create an old fashioned page in the pages directory. So if you're using that, you know how you can use it. Remember, the Prisma client is connecting to your database. You can't use it client side. You have to use this server side. First, we're gonna clean up a little bit of this code. This looks good. All right, we now have a blank application. So to use this in the app directory, we need to do a couple things. First, mark it as async because we're going to use await in it. And then const user will await Prisma. Make sure you're importing it from the file we created. User, and let, uh, let's just find the first one where email is test at test.com. Now this user may or may not exist, so you can add a check if you want for seeing if that user is there or not. But since we seeded the database, we know it is. So here we'll do hello user, and then just as safety conditional name. Save that, and there you go. That's all you had to do to use the Prisma client, connect to the database, find a user, and return it in a React server component. So this is how you would use it in the app directory. But if we're using this in a page, in the pages directory, you're going to need to use a slightly different method. Let's go ahead and create 
pages and then we'll call the file example here we have no server components so we're just going to export a regular page this is example so if we go here to example it should say That's weird. We had to restart our dev server for that to show up. I think that's a bug in Next.js. So once you create that, it should say hello over there. Might need to restart your dev server if that's not the case. And now we can use get server side props as the function that's going to connect to the database, get the user information and return it. And now we can also ensure we have the properties. We can infer the property types. Using the infer get server side props. And then make sure and now once again, hello. refresh the page and there you have it. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I build SaaS applications and help you build yours. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe. And until next time, happy coding.